Welcome in YouTube to part 11 of Morgan and Atari's Adventures Through Stormblood. Uh, we start this video with the level 68 Gunbreaker quest, and then we move into the MSQ where we are on the Azim Step. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and let me know what you're thinking of these shorter videos. And you can watch me and follow me on Twitch on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays where I stream starting around 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time. I love you YouTube and I'll see you in a bit. We Hrothgar are quite used to snow and ice, so we sometimes forget the problems it poses for the other races. This morning, a homeless hero lad was found lying stone cold in the street. When they came to carry him away, he was frozen solid. Like a statue. The poor thing can't have been more than 20 summers old. We asked the Temple Knights if there was something we could do, and we were told that they had the perfect assignment for us. Our client this time is Reese of Garland Iron. Their, their founder, Sid Garland, is one of the few Garlians to have turned his back on the Empire, and is a hero to many living under their rule. I wonder if I might have the honor of meeting him in person. At any rate, we must first head to the Sky Steel Manufactory. Okay. I mean, if you want to meet Sid, I can introduce you. Also, I'll show you all when we get over here. Uh, Morrigan got her hair colored. Much like I did. Green on the top and blue tips. Good evening. I take it you're the bodyguard sent by the Temple Knights. There's someone I'd like you to protect. A recently defected Garlean engineer, as it happens. I'll not bore you with the details. He is to oversee the installation of a Ceruleum heating system. We're hoping it would avert tragedies like the one that recently occurred in the brew. Yes, we saw the body being carried away. A terrible sight, it was. If this engineer friend of yours needs safe passage here, we'd be glad to help. Unfortunately, the Empire does not take kindly to desertion, especially when the man in question is one of its most highly esteemed scientists. We've received word that a group known as the Aluidae has been dispatched to see that he never reaches Ishgun. Gods be good. I've heard of them. Prisoners offered an opportunity to reduce their sentences through loyal services to Garlem. By all accounts, they fight like men possessed, desperate to earn their freedom. Worst of all, they are led by Vitas Quil Masala, a man whose cruelty knows no bounds. As a soldier, he reached the rank of pilots prior, but was re relegated after butchering the village of innocent civilians, purely to save his own bloodlust. Even his fellow Garlians were disgusted by these barbaric acts, yet that did not to damage his reputation as a skilled warrior, equal to Gaius Van Belsar himself. During my imprisonment, Vitas Quo Masala came to enlist me. I told him I'd sooner rot in jail than serve him. As you can imagine, he was far from pleased with my refusal. He tried to persuade me by using my Magitek collar to administer countless electrical shots. I'll never forget the look in his eyes as he pushed that button over and over. Of course, not everyone is as resilient as Bradham. Many who fight for the Aluades do so against their will, though they are no less deadly. By the Fury, if I'd known the dangers involved, I would have called the whole thing off. It's too late now, though. The airship is already on its way to Kurthus. It should soon be arriving at the observatorium. Sadly, we couldn't gain permission to have an Imperial craft dock in the city for matters of security. From the rendezvous point, we'll proceed the rest of the way on foot. Once we're safely inside the Gates of Judgment, we can consider the mission a success. Your friend is risking his life for the sake of others. Reese. I give my word that he will reach Ishgard safely. Listen, Sophie. You know as well as I do that the Aluidae are as ruthless as they are tenacious. For that reason, I want you to stay behind. You think you can take them on without me there to heal you? Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful to have you by my side. But against foes like that, Morgan and I will struggle to protect you and the engine. Protect me? Look, Radovan, we protect each other, remember? Well, perhaps you see me as nothing but a burden. Fine. Have it your way. Uh, 
Not to rush you or anything, but we should get going. I'll meet you at the airship landing on top of the tower. Before we leave, there's something I'd like to make clear. I didn't mean what I said to Sophie. I think she's an excellent conjurer and more than capable of taking care of herself. This is Vitus, Kumas Vitus Quell Masala. We're dealing with a monster who delights in toying with its prey. I can't let her face that kind of danger. You see, Sophie and I have been inseparable ever since we escaped our Garlean captors. When I discovered what had befallen my family, I came close to taking and I might have gone through it if Sophie hadn't stopped me. She's lost loved ones too, but has never given up. Sophie helped me realize there's still a place in this world. In fact, it was her idea that I became a body. Though no one will ever replace the family I lost, she helped fill that void in my life and gave me a reason to carry on. If she were here now, she would tell me to stop being such a sentimental old fool. Or words to that effect. Anyway, the sooner we finish this assignment, the sooner I can get back here and apologize to her. Bro, maybe you should have just told her, though, like. Touching story and all, and I'm glad you didn't go through with it, but she deserves the truth. Now that you're here, allow me to introduce the man you will be escorting. Kato Nan Mamula, at your service. Or should that be Kato Mamula now that I am in Ishka? Is something the matter? No, it's nothing. Well then, shall we begin? I remember this quest. Oh yeah. Morgan knows something's up. Jump from the top of the tower! We should have jumped that way. <laughs> The Alliday knew we were coming. Hell's bells! They must have seen that airship from Mom's away! I'll stay with the engineer. You go on ahead and draw them out. We'll rendezvous at the camp to the north. Alright. But I don't trust you. You're being dodgy. Alliday conscript. Sorry, but I must do this. Continue to the north. Okay, we gotta do that two more times, guys. So we got a Lancer and a Pugilist, huh? Or a Dragoon and a Monk, whatever. I'm gonna assume they got their uh, job crystals by this point. That was a waste. They are level 68, so if they hadn't gotten their job just the way. Oh boy. <laughs> now we get to actually do our full AoE rotation. Alright, now we go to Camp Dragonhead. Some of the Alliday stayed in their hiding places until you'd passed. 
One of them got to Reese. He's hurt, but it could have been a lot worse. I'm sorry. They caught me by surprise. We've made it this far, but Vitus is still out there. This is just a taste of what the Alarae have in store for us. Our best option is to avoid confrontation altogether. Mamula and I will sneak past them while you and Reese stay behind. The two of us stand a better chance than a group of four. Nah, buddy, we should stick together. You're a fool. Trying to take him on your own. I know how you feel, but sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. You see the sense in this, don't you? Annoyingly so, yes. We'll meet back in Ishgard. My colleagues will contact me via Link Pearl once Master Mamula has arrived in Ishgard. In the meantime, we should lie now. Or we should lie low. We don't want to alert the Alliday to our presence any more than we already have. Oh, and I'd better get these wounds looked at. Where's Sophie? Sophie knows what's going on. Hey, there she is. Thank goodness you're all right. You've been gone so long, I came looking for you. I met a few nasty characters on the way here, but I soon sent them packing. Wait, where's Radovan? And that engineer you're supposed to be escorting? Well, Kato Mamula. Kato non Mamula! If the two of them are together, then... Radovan never talks to anyone about it, but he comes from a place called... Bajja Citadel. It was utterly destroyed in a Garlean experiment gone wrong. In charge of the product were Midas Nan Garlean and his right-hand man, Kato Nan Mamula. Radovan's opposition to Bajja being used as a testing ground for potentially dangerous magitech led to his imprisonment. His fears were proved correct when the city was obliterated. There's a strong chance that he's planning to exact his revenge. We have to stop him. They headed west towards Ishgard, yes? We should be able to follow their tracks. There's no time to lose. Alright. good thing we could fly. Oh, Morgan's pissed. Did you see that look on her face? She's like, oh, f oh, buddy. You don't get to do this on your own. For my homeland. For my family. Boss Joe. Morgan! Stay back! This fiend robbed me of everything I held dear. Don't deny me my vengeance. You swore to protect him. I will not beg your forgiveness. However, I ask that you hear my final words. Midas and I knew there were risks involved with the experiment, but we did not foresee that it could fail so catastrophically. I have lived with unending, agonizing guilt ever since. From that day forth, I have sought redemption, a chance to somehow right the wrongs I have committed. That is why I asked Midas' son, Sid, to aid in my defection from Garlemald, that my knowledge and expertise may be put to good use. But I always knew that sins of my past would have returned to haunt me. 
I submit myself to your judgment. Does the word of a gunbreaker mean nothing, or have you forgotten about the gold whites? I have forgotten about gold whites. So we're going to go with that one. What have I become? My honor, as a gunbreaker, as a man, I've thrown it all away. You are the last of us now. You want us to kill him now, sir? No. The old goat can wait. It's the prowling lion I want. Yes. Your head will make a fine trophy. Is Mamula all right? And where's Radovan? Wandered off. But we've still got a job to do. And I dread to think what have ha might have happened if you hadn't stopped him. Come on, Morrigan. With or without Radovan, we still have a job to do. Let's get Mamula to Ishgard. After the trouble you had reaching Camp Dragonhead, I'm pleasantly surprised that Alude kept away from us for the remainder of the journey. Yes, indeed. Or yes, fortunate indeed. All's well that ends well, as the saying goes. One thing still troubles me, though. If that Vitus Quo Masala is as ruthless as you say, I doubt the walls of Ishgard will deter him from pursuing his target. As such, Master Mamula will be closely guarded until we can be certain it's safe. Yes, it would be a shame if I were kept from fulfilling my obligations. I hope that the next time we meet, I shall have good tidings to share. We managed to get Mamula here unharmed, but in doing so, we've lost sight of Radovan. He could be anywhere by now, but we've been through too much for me to turn my back on him. If he decides to get his act together, he knows where to find me. Until then, we'd better be on the lookout for the Alude. I doubt we've seen the last of them. Alright, now let's head over to Reunion so we can begin the MSQ again. Alright. As always, let's show up here and probably help three people. <clears throat> what we have to do in every new area. When last I spoke with Lord Hian, he said he spent much time in these markets. I had hoped we might find him here today, but alas. Hey, you Yugiri? I've been meaning to ask. There are an awful lot of Zayla here, aren't, th aren't there? Oh, I assumed you knew. 
The Azim Steppe has been home to the nomadic tribes of Bazela since antiquity. More than 50 roam these lands, and though they do not constitute a nation, there is a hierarchy of sorts determined through ritual combat. Funny, if they're so busy fighting each other, you'd think the Empire would be able to march in and take the step with ease. I wonder why they haven't. Why indeed, Lys. Why indeed. Perhaps they see little value in it. Especially given the fierce reputation of the Zayla warriors who would fight tooth and nail, tooth and nail to oppose them, tooth and nail. <laughs> These lands were not made for men. The soil is thin and the weather unforgiving. The Zayla found ways to survive, it is true, but they are made of sterner stuff than most Imperials, conscripts or citizens. Thanks for taking the time to explain. It sounds like I've got a lot to learn. Later, I mean. We're meant to be looking for here. People from many tribes gather in reunion to trade goods and information. I should be surprised if we cannot learn something of value here. Let us make our inquiries separately. Morgan, why don't you speak with some of the merchants here? We ended up with beautiful weather on the step today. Because, my goodness, it's so clear. We can see for days. There's a slight breeze. Booze? Fresh booze? Your choice of lamb or zoe? Guaranteed to satisfy. How many will you have, miss? Eh? A doman. Unless another Dazcar is keeping him in her yurt, he is not here. More fool her if she took a doman for a husband. But enough about domans. Let us speak of booze instead. You cannot come to the Azim Steppe and not sample this most traditional of delicacies. Hold on. What fortune you have to come hither at this time? Freshly slaughtered, every cut available on request, organs too. Hearts, livers, brains, or a brace of blood sausages if you desire only a snack. A doman? Poor meat they make, domans. I jest, I jest. Hmm. I did see a young mole in the company of one some few days ago. Roasted fish with pumpkin, an exotic foreign delicacy cooked to perfection. Beloved without the step. Gum! Gum! You seek domans? Then you are come to the wrong place, my friend. Delicious as my foodstuffs are, they find little favor with those from the south. Now, if it were Goro you were looking for, on the other hand, then I might be able to help you. They flock to my stall. I have brought you a new brush, my beloved. So smooth and silky your mane shall be. The envy of every other man. Hmm? Say again? You are seeking who? Ah, the Doman! I know of whom you speak. He comes and goes with a mole girl. Though I could not describe her, I only know that she is mole because I heard them talking as they passed. With the chat mode and say, use your keyboard. Okay. Alright. Slash S. Mole? I am Mura, if you must know. Come down from the mountains in the north if there is nothing else. You take me for a maul? I am Orinir. Compare me not with one so weak and lowly. Oh, I should have known. Because, you know, you're part of the MSQ. Yes, I am Maul. My name is Serena. May I help you? Oh. Oh, I see. You are looking for Hian. In that case... 
How urgent this business must be to leave our conversation unfinished. The Kensai. Will you buy it? There is but one bundle left. If not, then... I, I will, I will. Though I had not thought to pay so high a price. It is a bargain for which you should be grateful. If you lack the coin, then the fault is your own, and you will leave with nothing. Please, I must have the Kensai. The gods themselves requested it. We are bound to their will. Pay me the difference in Whisper Root. I will sell it to the next apothecary to pass through, reu through reunion, and we will each feel fairly treated. But do not tarry. Should another come before you, coin in hand, I will not refuse him. I understand. Thank you for this kindness. I, I am sorry, but we must speak of he and later. I cannot leave reunion without that kinsai. You want to help me, is that it? I I do not know what to say. Thank you, Morrigan. Thank you. The lumbering ones we must fell wander the plains to the west of Reunion. If we each harvest two of them, then we should have enough whisper root. Return here when you have finished. Good luck. Alright, let's get Chocobo out. should probably just pull you over to one of your brethren. Made this take a little less time because I could be focusing on two of you. She did tell us we had to slay two of them. Welcome back, Morgan. <clears throat> Have you brought the Whisper Root? Blessed is he who knows who shows so. Hold on. <laughs> Blessed is he who shows kindness to strangers, for with fortune does he ever ride. Will this quantity suffice? It shall. The Kensai is yours. The gods favor you more than you know, child. Udgon rarely have need of such herbs, and so my stock is limited. Had you come a day earlier or later, I would have had none. Perhaps the gods guided me here. Whoa, oops. Perhaps the gods guided me here as they guided grandmother. As they guided this woman from the west. How goes the search? Any luck? <laughs> what fortune to meet a friend of the young master! Well met, Serena. If you have an inkling as to the current whereabouts of Lord Hien, we should be most grateful for your assistance. Oh, please, it is I who should be grateful. Hold! What is this? I came first, you second! Know you to whom you speak? All people of the steppe should! Or have you fought so much that you have forgotten the face of your superiors? Superiors? I spit on your superiority, little prince! Twisted and mad as sand devils, your kind are! I can't stand them. <laughs> Those two don't seem to like each other very much. 
Those boys are of the Oranir and Dothal, the two strongest tribes. The children of Azim are destined to rule, so they declare to all who will listen. Their word is law, for now. Grand, flamboyant fighters, but deadly, very deadly. He prances as a horse, as do his brothers after their many recent victories. The Undying Ones too are strong, fearless, and vicious. They often reigned in the past. Now they are sorely tested. Ah, the master of the markets. He is Castile. To fight in reunion is forbidden, and to break the peace is to be banished forever. This he says without words, for words are lies to the Castile. They do not speak. That's... interesting. Honestly, it is. And all these different tribes share the same lands, do they? No wonder it's tense. <laughs> I shall look for you on the field at the Nardom. Mark my words! Daring do dandy. <laughs> As shall I. Mayhap I shall take eleven more Dothar heads to make a dozen with yours. I, I look forward to the day. The dispute will be settled at the Nardom? A great battle held on the final day of the Sahan San. During this time, all bonds of hierarchy are broken. All Zela are equal and free to prepare for the fight. The tribe which triumphs in the Nardom rules until the next Sahan San. Which in these lands is now. Ah, so that is what they call the custom. I presume your tribe will also be taking part? Not all seek the Dawn Throne. Some are satisfied with their lot. Others, like the Kestir, have reason to remain neutral. The Mole are lambs among wolves. Long were we content to remain apart and live quietly, but... Never mind that. You see Kien, yes? I know where he may be. There it is. There it is. We have decided to intervene because we won't let this adorable little Ara be treated like lesser. I struggled to get that sentence out like good lord. Long ago, my grandmother having received a vision from the gods bade me go forth into the southern mountains. It was there that I found Hian, near death from many wounds. I brought him to our village, and there we nursed him back to health. Afterwards he chose to remain, that he might repay us for our kindness. Dolmen set much store by honor and shame, so at first I did not question it. Excuse me, if I could see your map for a moment. Here. He has grown fond of this place. It affords him a view of the markets in the steppe. I would accompany you, but I must return to our village to prepare my grandmother's meal. Thank you again for your assistance. Our long-awaited reunion is at hand. Come, my friends, let us go and greet our lord and master. I remember the first time I had to come find he and it took me forever to figure out how to climb this little mount. There he is. There is he in.
feel like this is gonna come poison. The Kami are merciful! My Lord Hien! I see you are alive and well! Ah, oh, you are come sooner than expected. So, my blade or my head, which would you have of me? The people of Yansha remain loyal to Doma. I have seen the fire in their eyes. They are ready to rise up and fight. Yeah, they are. The time is ripe, my lord. Return with us, blade in hand, and lead Doma to freedom. Not less than liberty will suffice, then. A pity. It would prove far more difficult to deliver than my head. But if my people wish to pursue an impossible dream, then who am I to deny them? You, Giri! Go, Setsu! And, uh... Morrigan! The Scions of the Seventh Dawn, my lord. Oh. Good and true friends who opened their hearts and homes to us when we fled to Eorzea. Far across the sea they have journeyed to stand with us in the fight for Doman liberation. To oppose the Empire, as they have in the West, where they are lauded as heroes for their many deeds. Say no more, Yogiri. Say no more. I observed how you helped Serena, to whom I am deeply indebted. For that and for the aid you provided my people, you have my deepest gratitude. There is no doubting your strength, nor your character. It would be my honor to fight by your side. Same Z's. So, what of Doma? Arise, my friends, and tell me of our home. I have made my decision. You, Giddy. I bid you return to Yansha and take charge of our forces in preparation for my homecoming. As for our esteemed guests, I would ask that you remain here with me. I sense you will be a great help in the coming days. Your will is my command, my lord, but how much longer do you intend to stay? Oh, only until I have won the contest. I mean to return at the head of the Zayla army. <laughs> oh, shit, I forgot that... We weren't doing this to help them. I mean, we are doing it to help them all. But also because Ian wants an army. You mean to participate in the Nardom? Have you a better idea? Consider how soundly we were defeated before. The Imperials may have since grown weaker, but we are weaker still. It would be folly to challenge them without first supplementing our forces, so yes, I intend to win the Narden and enlist the aid of every able-bodied Zayla I can. Furthermore, by championing them all in the contest, I can at last repay their kindness. Lest you for- Oops. <laughs> just so, just button. so. Our Lord has spoken, you giddy. But take heart, I shall keep him safe. And should it come to it, Bring him back by force. This is no laughing matter, Gosetsu. But if these are my orders, very well. Once more, I place my faith in you. Pray look after them both. I can do that. You have my word. Looks like it's up to us then. Though it does seem a bit risky. Isn't Hien meant to be the next King of Doma or something? So they say. Though in truth, I am but a pale reflection of my late father. All the more reason to entreat your assistance. For ours is an impossible dream. 
to set in motion a revolution that will rattle the very firmament. I did it again. I am so sorry. I need to just set the controller down during these scenes. Morgan and Atari, was it? Once again, allow me to thank you for your many deeds in service to Dome. I don't know why I can't even come close to mimicking that voice. For 25 years did my father rule in name only. My rule, if one would deign to call it that, has been not in comparison. That changes now. We have a purpose and a plan. And after we take to the battlefield together, we will have victory as well. But you are a practical woman, I can tell. Disinclined to trust in words when actions speak truer, I can relate. Thanks for watching part 11 of Morgan and Atari's Adventures Through Stormblood YouTube. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and let me know what you all thought of the video. And don't forget, again, you can catch me on Twitch, where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays starting about 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time, and that is twitch.tv slash Caleb Games here. I love you, YouTube. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you later.